All right, hey everybody, this is Rosh, and you're watching Helix Basics. This is a YouTube tutorial series I'm putting together to help new and experienced users program their Line 6 Helix. So a little about myself. Once again, my name is Rosh, and I build and program guitar rigs out here in the LA area, as well as online. So some of my clients include Steve Vai, Def Leppard, Melissa Etheridge, Perfect Circle, Bush, Kylie Minogue, Maroon 5, and more. So I wanted to get back to the Helix community and just some tips and tricks on how to program their Line 6 Helix. If you've been watching this tutorial series, you've definitely seen a lot of fractal audio content. And one of the things a lot of people don't know about me is I build and program all the guitar uh, modelers out there. And uh, some of those modelers include the Kemper, the Quad Cortex, all the fractal products, and in this case, the Line 6 Helix. So want to get back to the community. There's a lot of crossover content. There's a lot of best practices, no matter what modeler you're using. And um, you can definitely apply it to whatever modeler you use so you can get the best tone and functionality both live in the studio, on tour, and wherever else you may find yourself. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to use dual cabinets, but this time we're going to dial in a rock lead sound, um, but using the front panel. So this is going to be similar to the uh, rock lead sound that I was uh, tutorial that I did earlier, but again, we're using dual cabinets to kind of round out the sound. So first thing that we're going to want to do is let's go to the center of the preset and let's start adding an amp and a cap. Now, keep in mind, you don't want to use the amp plus cab block. You actually want to use a separate amp and a separate cabinet right there. So I'm going to add an amp. I'm going to go down to the guitar. And for lead sound, I'm definitely a fan of the German Mahadeva. So we're going to go all the way down to here and we can see the German Mahadeva amp. And this is uh, based off of the Bogner Shiva. And again, what I'm doing is I'm using the joystick to navigate between each of the columns and then either rotating it or using the downward motion to select this amp. So I'm going to press the joystick and now the amp is added. And the next step, of course, is to add a cabinet block. Again, finding a blank space, pressing down on the joystick, and then either rotating or using the down arrow to go to the cap. So what I'll do is instead of selecting a single cabinet, I'm going to use a dual cabinet. And this time, what I'm going to do is let's select the German, or not the German, the 4x12 Greenback 25. And what we want to do now that we have both the dual cabinet and the regular cab, uh, the dual cabinets and the regular amp there, the first thing that we're going to want to do, of course, is let's go to the third page using the page right button right underneath the joystick. And what we're going to do is make sure that the cabinet is matching. So again, we got the Greenback 25. And what I'm going to do is page right to the last page. And I'm going to bring the level all the way down so we can dial in the first cabinet. So a very common pairing that I like to always use for most of my dual cabinet sounds is pairing a 57 dynamic or any type of dynamic microphone with a ribbon mic. So here in the second cabinet, I'm going to select the Royer 121. And again, we're keep in mind that the level is all the way off. We're going to use the 57 to get a lot of the mid-range information. It's going to help the tone cut through the mix. It's going to add a lot of brightness and clarity. And then the ribbon mic's going to fill out the rest of the sound. It adds a lot of low end as well as smooth top end. And that's usually great for most guitar tones out there. So the next thing is, of course, we're going to add some standard low and high cuts. So I'll start, I usually recommend users start somewhere between 80 and 100 hertz for the low cut. And in the high cut, we're going to go all the way down to about 8K. And again, somewhere between 5 and 8K is usually a good level for the high cut. You don't need any information above the high cut around 8,000 hertz. Um, generally, that's going to be a lot of that shrill top end that usually is not very pleasant sounding, and it conflicts with a lot of other instruments. And the low cut conflicts with the bass, the, uh, the kick drum, the floor tom, and, uh, and it can just make your tone sound boomy and muddy. So next step is I always recommend that a lot of users start at the cap edge. And if you need the tone to be brighter, move towards the center. Or if you need the tone to be darker, move away from the center and the tone will get darker. So let's start with the cap edge and let's just kind of see what we're working with. And again, I'm going to be boosting the amplifier with an overdrive pedal and adding some time-based effects as well to kind of round it out. So um, the reason why I like this amp a lot is it's already, uh, even at the default settings, it sounds pretty good. And keep in mind that the treble knob on this amp it doesn't give you a lot of shrill top end so don't be afraid to crank the treble so right away i'm going to add a little bit more bass a little bit more mids and you can hear that with this amp the even though the treble seems to be really high it's not that high at all so let's add a little bit of channel volume 
And now what we can do is we can use the cabinet to dial in the rest of the tone. So I think right there it already sounds pretty good, but I guess I could I could definitely go brighter and I don't want to crank the treble on this amp to do that or the mids. I actually like to dial in most of the tone again in the mic placement and in the cap lock. So Yeah, I think that's already pretty good. And the reason why I like using the microphones more than the amps because sometimes you can tell that, you know, the trout, you know, certain amps the way their knobs function don't really have a lot uh don't really shape the tone that much especially if you're using a, an amp with a lot of gain in it. So you can see I cranked the treble all the way to 10 and it's not really doing that much making it brighter or anything. So again, I'll bring the treble back down to 7. And you can see that we have some other uh, things on the, uh, you know, the second page of the amp. I'll bring the master up just a little bit. And now we are here. It's a lot of gain, so I'm going to bring the drive down a little bit, knowing full well that I'm going to boost the front end with an overdrive. So the, le the next step is let's start dialing in the ribbon mic. And again, we're going to do some standard positions, low and high cuts. So I will go to 80 here. And I will go to 8,000 here. And the ribbon mic is going to provide a lot of that low end, a lot of that smooth top end. And so what I'm going to do is starting there, I'll start blending the microphone in. Yep, I think that sounds pretty good. I could use a little bit more low end. Again, I'm kind of going for a thick rock lead sound, you know. Uh, I'm a big fan of players like Eric Johnson and Andy Timmons, so uh, I want a tone that's going to be nice and thick up in the top part of the, you know, the guitar, and it doesn't get too shrill in the top end. Uh, right now I'm playing a Les Paul on the bridge pickup with the knobs wide open. And you can tell even way above the 12th fret, it's still... The notes are nice and uh, fat and thick up there without being too shrill on the top end. Now for me as a player, I generally don't always use the knobs wide open. I definitely maybe use the volume knob on somewhere between 8 and 9, and then also the tone knob. But again, for those who are more of the guitar players that keep the knobs wide open and they want all the tone to kind of come from the modeler or the amp, this is definitely an amp choice that I would recommend. Okay, sounds pretty good. Now we're hearing a little bit of hiss. So we can, of course, go to the gate right here. Oops. Um, so we go to the gate, and then what we're going to do is, of course, turn on the input gate right there. Now it's going to get rid of a lot of that hiss. And again, um, you can mess with the gate settings if you'd like, but uh, I find that the default settings are going to be probably fine for this. Next step, of course, is we're going to add a reverb. And one of the things that uh, I definitely want to address is that you definitely want to use a stereo reverb if you plan on using stereo delays and effects. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add that stereo reverb here, and we'll address this in a second, but let's just dial in the tone. I don't need that the mix that high, and I don't need that much of a decay. So what I want to do is just give a little space and ambience to the tone. Yeah, that sounds pretty good right there. And if you look at this icon, it is indicating that the reverb is in stereo because we're going to also be using a stereo delay. So if we put a delay here and select a stereo delay, so for example, if I use a ping pong style delay, you will notice now that the d delays ping from left to right, or right to left rather. Now, an issue that is very common amongst users is if they put a mono effect after a stereo effect, the mono effect will sum the stereo effect to mono. So for example, if I put a mono reverb after, uh, whoops, mono reverb, after the delay, you'll notice that because this reverb is in mono, it is going to take that ping pong delay and then push it right up to the center. So again, I find that not great, especially for a lead sound. I do like using stereo delays for lead sound. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a stereo reverb and let's just dial that in really quickly once again. So now, now that I have this in here, I have a stereo reverb with a 
stereo delay. And one of my favorite uh, stereo delays to use is the dual delay. So let's select that. And what this allows you to do is control both the right and the left times, and you can control them individually. So you get this, uh, even at the default settings, it kind of gets this little cascading effect with your guitar tone, very similar to another guitar player that I'm a big fan of, Steve Lukather and Mike Landau. Kind of a lot of those 80s you know, studio session players would use a setting similar to this for their lead sounds. So I'm just bringing the mix down. And again, the right side mix, I can have just a little higher than the left. And same thing with the feedback. And that's just because the delay repeats are a little bit longer. Yeah, I think that sounds pretty good. And again, I'm going to kind of go for like an Andy Timmons, Eric Johnson thing. But again, not perfectly exact. I also can't quite play like those players. But again, I do draw inspiration from their tone and their approach to uh, dialing in tones. and. As Andy Timmons says, he likes to have a little halo around the note. So what we're going to do is use this delay to kind of mimic that. And again, what I'm going to do is in the second page of this delay, I'm going to start using a lot of the high cut. And the high cut is basically an EQ. The low and the high cut is basically an EQ for only the repeats. So for example, right now, the repeats basically have the same EQ as the note. And I find that that's going to get in the way, especially if you do a lot of alternate picking like I do. I find that the notes get kind of clumsy. I feel like I'm kind of like hearing the echo repeats just at the same volume as my alternate picking. So I don't really dig that. So what I'm going to do is, of course, bring the high cut way down so that the echo repeats are darker than the note. I'm going to bring the low cut up just so the notes are still have some clarity and they're not too muddy. So I find that the notes kind of stay out of the way, especially if you like to do a lot of alternate picking. Of course, I do a lot of hybrid picking and legato stuff as well. And again, having an, a delay that is EQ'd almost the same as the note can be a little distracting and can get in the way. I want just a, quite a little subtle halo around the notes. So I'm going to keep bringing the low and high cut down. Yeah, sounds pretty good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the, whoops, not the speed, but the depth up a little bit, and it's going to give the uh, a deeper chorusing on each of the echo repeats. Again, just getting a little bit more of a halo type uh, effect around the lead sound. Okay, and I'm going to go to the last page and turn the trails on so that if I do bypass the echo, that the trails stay on as opposed to if they're off. By bypassing the delay, you end up getting no trails. Okay. The next step, of course, is that I like to boost the uh, the uh, amp with an overdrive. Uh, again, it makes the notes just kind of fly off the fretboard. It's gonna also chop off a little bit of the low end and a little bit of the top end and add a little bit of a, a little bit of gain, but not too much. So one of my favorite distortions to use is, of course, the ubiquitous tube screamer. So we're gonna go over and use the joystick, go into the mono, and then we're gonna go down and use a Tube Screamer, which is the Scream 808. Now, what I do with the Tube Screamer for a lead sound is I actually turn the gain all the way off and the level all the way up. So what's gonna happen is it's basically functioning as almost like a clean boost or a mid-range boost to give a little bit more gain to the amp, but it also chops off the top end and the low end. It makes the amp much easier to play. You can uh, definitely, you know, hear that it's definitely got a lot smoother of a top end and a lot less low end, so the notes don't get too flubby, as opposed to this. And it also adds a bit of gain to it. And of course, by boosting the front end, it makes the amp feel really great under your fingers. Then it'll just, again, fly off the fretboard. You can, I definitely have a much easier time alternate picking with an overdrive pedal on. And again, you can hear that it adds a little bit of gain. And it's a little bit more aggressive in the mids. So of course, if you do need more gain than that, you can, of course, crank some of the gain. You can also use the tone to kind of shape, uh, you know, how bright or dark the tone is. 
So if you need it darker, obviously roll off the tone. But I found around the six point whatever seemed fine to me. Yeah, I find that's pretty good. I'm gonna go back to the amp and just add just a hair more drive. And again, of course you can add the gain from the pedal, but I think the amp just needs a, just a touch more. And so let's try it here. Yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with that. And again, we're using dual cabinets to dial in a basic rock lead. So again, this definitely sounds much fuller than using just one microphone to do the heavy lifting. I find that just using only a dynamic microphone or only a ribbon mic just doesn't give you everything that you need. Uh, I don't find any microphone really gives you a full sound as opposed to using two. And again, this is a very common practice in a lot of studios as well as a lot of recordings as well as live. And I find that um, using two microphones to really fill out your lead sound will definitely give you all the things that you need because here's what it would sound like without the ribbon mic. Yeah, it just sounds so thin on the low end. So of course, we're going to dial this back up to about negative two, somewhere around there. And then we'll stick with this tone. And again, so every user is going to be different, of course. So obviously, if this is more gain than you're used to, then you can obviously dial the gain back or, you know, use a different overdrive pedal, etc. But again, the paradigm is generally I use an overdrive to boost the front end of the amp, use dual cabinets, and of course, have the amp slightly dirty, and then use a stereo delay with a stereo reverb after. So thank you so much for watching. I think that's a good place to wrap it up. If you guys need any one-on-one -on -one help programming your Helix, I would be more than happy to set up a session with you. So feel free to contact me directly. Other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.